everybody, how's it going? It's Jamie the Crafty DIY Guy and I'm back. I've got some Christmas Dollar Tree DIY projects for you today that are all super, super easy. I'm really excited about all these. Also, um, I did want to point out my Buffalo check plaid shirt that I'm wearing. I thought it was appropriate for Christmas and if you like this shirt, it is $9.98 at Walmart. Uh, hello. Why wouldn't you buy this? It's a flannel shirt. It's great. I'm sure the guys would love it. I think it would be really cool with the ladies as well. I don't know, put it with a pair of leggings, maybe some boots, who knows? Um, hey, if you are one of my OGs, one of my long-term subscribers, one of my long-term friends, thank you guys so much for being here. I truly appreciate it. And you know I love interaction and uh, chatting with you and sharing comments and ideas and such. If you are a newbie, I also appreciate you guys and thank you as well for being here. I'm glad that you're on this journey with me. It's been a crazy year and I'm very, very grateful for it. Um, if you are brand new to the channel, maybe YouTube just recommended the video for you and you liked the thumbnail, so you clicked on. Thank you, thank you YouTube as well. Thanks for being here and uh, hopefully you'll become a subscriber. All right, let's get into the video. All right everyone, and for project number one, we are going to be making some tasseled ornaments. I'm gonna be using one of these Dollar Tree cutouts. I love these particular ones. Also, I grabbed one of these fillable ornaments when I was out. This particular one kind of looks like a light bulb. I grabbed a package of these sequin ornament fillers and then also for the tassel part of this, we're gonna be using some twine and some wood beads that I picked up from Amazon. I will link these below for you if you're interested in getting some for yourself. Go ahead and fill your ornament with whatever color combination that you want. I'm gonna go ahead and add the red, the white, and the green sequins in mine and just shake it all up and make it a color splash explosion. I'm gonna go ahead and take my wood beads and just put them on a piece of red string. For this particular set of beads, I'm actually going to be painting these and I'm going to spray paint them gold. It was dark out, so I couldn't show you guys that, but it was literally just some spray paint. I did it very slow and just in a couple different coats. That way I was able to get all the color combos. I strung them up and then to string them into the actual ornament itself um, on that end that kind of looks like the light bulb, you will need a skewer or something to kind of help poke your string through. Once you get your string through, just simply tie it off in a knot and you will be fine. And this is what it looks like when it's all done. I love this. I think it's super cute. I think it's super sweet. For our second tasseled ornament, we're gonna go a little bit more organic with this one. I'm just gonna go ahead and string some unfinished wood beads onto my cording. And uh, this is actually the uh, jute twine that I'm using for this particular one. I am literally not going to paint these. I am keeping them exactly the way that they are. Just very, very natural. Once I've got them all completed and strung up, I just tied it at the end of the Christmas tree. Then I'm gonna take some of this buffalo check ribbon that I picked up at Dollar tree and just tie it off on the end and create a little bit of a bow. I'm not a great bow maker, so this is what you get. But again, I love this. I think it's super, super cute. And for our next project, we're going to grab two packages of these Dollar Tree ornaments. These are plastic and they come in, I think, about four different colors. Also, I had a wreath ring that was left over from a 3D wreath form that I had uh, kind of torn apart earlier. Just remove those little circles and then you're going to cut the wire so you can thread your ornaments on there. I'm taking my wood burning tool and I'm literally just poking holes on either side of the ornament, kind of like you see here. And uh, then you're gonna thread these onto your wire form. Now, this is a little bit challenging just because it's kind of hard to line those holes up, but trust me, you can do it. Just have some patience with it and it will turn out just fine. To prevent my ornaments from flying off of this wire, I did go ahead and just crimp the end of it there, kind of like a little, I don't know, L shape. And uh, that helps actually keep everything intact, which is nice. Then I'm going to take my uh, two wires and just kind of pull them nice and tight and then uh, start to twist the ends. This is a thicker wire, so I did grab my lineman pliers and it worked out perfectly fine. Now I took my wreath and actually turned it into a centerpiece. I added a hurricane that I picked up from Goodwill at my last haul. And then I wanna put this candle in the middle, but it's kind of short and I 
it's the only candle that I have really that's appropriate size. Um, so I added one of these Dollar Tree candlesticks upside down and I added two bags of my wreath filler here, or uh, sorry, vase filler from Dollar Tree. And then I just added that candle right to the top and I've created a great centerpiece. I did add some greenery in between those ornaments. And again, I love the way this looks. I think it looks perfect on the table. And it's a great way to kick off the holiday season. For our next project, I'm going to be using three of these candy cane wreath forms from Dollar Tree. Also, I'm going to be using four packages of this 15 feet garland that I picked up at Dollar Tree as well. And then one of these large snowflake cutouts. For the snowflake cutout, I'm actually going to take this outside and paint this. Because it is dark outside, I'm going to paint this magically in this chrome color. And then I'm taking my three candy cane wreath forms. And what we're going to be doing is making one a J just by flipping it upside down. And then for the two candy cane wreath forms that are left, we're going to turn these into a Y. So the first thing I'm going to do is take my lineman pliers again. Uh, my favorite tool ever, by the way. And uh, I am just going to clip all of these off and kind of keep that bottom, um, well, I guess if it's the candy cane, it's the top part of the arch. Um, that is going to be the Y or the, um, it's going to be part of the Y. Uh, for that piece, I'm just going to push it aside and uh, not use it. You could certainly use it for the base if you wanted to. I wanted something uh, just a little bit different. So, um, I'm going to line up my letters to make sure that they're about the same size. And then once I've clipped that as well, I am just going to take my lineman pliers again and kind of turn the ends into these little hooks. And that will actually help keep this uh, together a little bit more. I'm also going to use some wire and we're going to tie these together and make sure that they're good and sturdy. I have this wire that I picked up at Dollar Tree quite a while ago and it did come with this little handy gadget to cut it. And uh, I am simply just going to tie it around and just make sure that that Y is good and sturdy and secure. Now I'm going to take my wreath forms and actually start wrapping them with that garland from Dollar Tree. The great thing about that garland is that it does have wire in it. So you can literally just kind of wrap it around one end of your wreath form and secure it and then just start wrapping. If you wanted to go ahead and add some floral wire or some other kind of wire in between there to help keep it on there, you could. But honestly, I'm not having any problems at all with it. And uh, I am just going to continue to wrap the J and the Y until they are completely covered in that garland. Again, I used about three and a half bundles of that 15 feet garland to wrap my J and my Y with. For my snowflake, I'm gonna add just a little bit of interest at the top of it. So I'm taking this buffalo check ribbon and I'm just gonna wrap it around my fingers a couple times. I'm gonna tie it off in the middle and it's going to create this little bow. I'm just hot gluing it to the top of that snowflake. That way it covers up that hole where the, um, the hanger originally was. And um, as you can see, it is super, super cute when it's all done. Now, as of right now, I've just got this hanging up on the wall above my bar. I love the way this looks, but I will probably end up taking this outside. I did add some ornaments. You can decorate this any way that you like. That's the beauty of this. I think it would be even really, really cute wrapped in some lights. And for our next project, I'm going to be using one of these steering wheel covers from Dollar Tree. I was lucky to find one in red. I wanted to use one of these mirrored frames, but I'm just going to use the frame itself. I had one in my scrap pile, so I grabbed that. And then I had some of these leftover florals that I'm going to be using as well. Take your steering wheel cover and literally just wrap it around your mirrored frame, kind of like so. And then what I'm going to do is add some hot glue in between there and just make sure that those are joined together and everything is holding together very, very nicely. You can do this pretty easily. It's not hard to do. I just did it in small sections working my way around. Then I'm adding my floral pieces. Um, these were taken from an old wreath that I did uh, last year, actually. And so that's why you see some of those little pine pieces and, and random things stuck to the bottom. But, uh, you know, it, it, it was easy to recycle them. So uh, I am just going to glue these and put these all around the wreath form itself and just literally decorate it up as much as I want to. I'm adding some 
some pine cones. I almost called them acorns. Um, I'm adding some pine cones. I'm adding some different things that came off the floral pieces. And uh, when it's all done, I'm going to take it to my coffee table. A couple of months ago at Goodwill, I found this star tray, so I'm gonna be using this again. I'm adding my wreath ring to the center, and then I'm adding a Dollar Tree vase with a candle on the inside to the center. This makes the perfect little coffee table centerpiece. And for my next project, I am going to be taking some of this fabric from Crafter Square. This is the white felt fabric, also some Dollar Tree truck ornaments. This is a four pack. We're gonna be using one of the trucks and all of the trees. And then I took a Dollar Tree cloche and just spray painted it gold. So go ahead and take your fabric and remove all of these pesky stickers that come on there. Um, by the way, those scissors that I'm using are from a company called Slice. They're ceramic, they're safety blades, and I love cutting with them and 1% of their sales always goes to autism, which I think is amazing. So go ahead and take your scissors or your uh, cloche bottom there, duh, and uh, trace it around with a pencil like I'm doing here. And then you're going to take those scissors, those great scissors by Slice that uh, I will link below and just simply cut out your circle. And uh, I am going to make it slightly smaller than what you saw with the cloche but I'm not going to cut it down. I'll show you a little trick. Go ahead and take some hot glue, place it on the bottom of your cloche, kind of like so, spread it out nice and thin, and then just take your felt fabric and overlap kind of like so. And then once that dries, or it's close enough to being dry, take your pencil or a pen or your utility blade, whatever you have, and just kind of poke it down into the cloche kind of like so. That felt fabric is actually so soft that it doesn't interfere with putting the lid on the cloche at all, which is great. Um, I did actually repeat this and I put two pieces of the felt circle on the bottom of my cloche just because I wanted it to be nice and full looking and uh, the fabric was kind of thin. So take one of your red trucks, remove the tree and remove all of the, um, the hanger wire pieces, and then just simply glue this to the bottom of your cloche. These little trucks are the perfect size for the bottom of this cloche, which is great. Go ahead and just hold it in place until it stands up by itself, and then you're gonna take some of your trees. Now, I want my trees to kind of look like the truck is in the forest, so I'm cutting away some of those um, little wire pieces at the end. That way mine can be varying heights. I've got one that's really tall, I've got one that's smaller, I've got one that's kind of uh, even smaller than that. And as you will see, it makes a nice little collection like I've got a forest and I'm driving my truck through it. Add your cloche top and you've got the cutest little um, cloche thingy that you can put on a tiered tray. And for our last DIY, I'm going to be taking one of these small jars that I picked up at Dollar Tree. These are brand new and I just recently found these. Also, I had some Buffalo Check fabric left over and I also grabbed one of these child puzzle pieces that I thought would be pretty handy. And I love that green tree kind of shape. Because the fabric is kind of thin, I am going to use some of that white felt from the previous project. Again, I'm just adding some hot glue right onto the lid here. Um, you could certainly keep this. I'm just kind of making it a buffalo check kind of uh, jar. Uh, and then I'm gluing it down on top of the felt kind of like so. And then I'm also gonna repeat the process and glue the buffalo check fabric on top. I'm gonna make sure that everything is good and dry and then I'm just going to take everything and uh, trim right around it. And you can just cut right through both. Again, I'm using those amazing scissors from Slice. And uh, once you've kind of got the shape, you wanna leave enough that you have um, some to fold under that lid, that red lid there. So uh, go ahead and cut it pretty short or pretty close rather to that. And then cut some slices into the actual circle. That way, when you fold it over as you're gluing around the, um, the lid, it will actually lay a little bit smoother than it would if you didn't do that. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, I know the picture is kind of wonky there. I, um, I was a little off camera. <laughs> 
Now, once you've got your lid covered, you could certainly keep the jar as is with the blessings on the front. I'm not going to cover that because I really do like that, but I am going to just turn this around. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that triangle, that green triangle that reminds me of a Christmas tree, and I'm going to glue it to my jar just with some hot glue. And again, it just makes the cutest little jar perfect for a tiered tray. You could put some sugar packets or anything in it, really. Um, again, I think it's super cute and it looks really amazing on that tiered tray. And speaking of tiered trays, this is what mine looks like when it's all complete. I've got that cloche on there. I've got some random jingle bells. I've got that small little jar and also those tasseled ornaments. So again, super, super cute. And I hope that you are inspired by some of these ideas.